Hi all, today I am going to demonstrate how to implement guaranteed delivery scenario using WSO2 Enterprise Service Bus and Message Broker. To give you a brief idea, uh, this is our scenario. Uh, so the message being sent to WSO2 ESP, which comes to the message uh, the store mediator, and the store mediator will store the message. Uh, in the JMS queue for this purposes we are using message broker and then the message will be consumed from the queue by the message processor and send it to the endpoint. For the endpoint we are using uh, access to servers uh, simple stock code service which comes with WSO2 ESP. So, uh, so start off with uh, you need to download message broker and enterprise service bus distributions to do so please go to wso2.com our official website and then select products uh, click on enterprise service bus which will direct you to the di latest download link of uh, enterprise service bus and same way you can download message broker as well so i have already downloaded these two distributions onto my desktop so these are the two latest uh, release products of wso2 uh, ESP and MB. So uh, we'll go through this documentation which will help us to implement this guaranteed delivery scenario. So as you know since uh, WSO2 products are starting on HTTPS uh, 9443 by default uh, we since we are using two products to avoid uh, port conflicts We'll have to uh, change port offset value of one can distribution. So I'm going to uh, increase the port offset value of message broker uh, configuration. For to do that, you need to go to repository conf directory and open carbon XML file, and then increase message uh, increase the port offset by value by one. So. Uh, I'm going to extract these two packs now. So we are inside WSO2 MB now. So uh, let's go to repository. So I'll increase post offset value by one. So we have completed this step now. So we can start the M MB server now. Uh, since you are in Linux format, you can start the server using wso2 server.sh file if you are Windows. Then you'll have you can start uh, MB server using WSO2 server.bat file. So since I'm in Linux uh, platform, I'm going to start it using WSO2 server sh file. The next step is going to be configuring ESP to enable JMS uh, transport. We need to copy these two jar files from WSO2 MB client lib directory. To ESP repository components lib folder. So if you go to MB distribution, you can see in the client lib there are five this, uh, jars. So we need to copy these two jars to ESP's repository components lib folder. So I'm going to do it now. Let's copy. So these two being copied now. And then we have to enable 
transport receiver and transport center in access to XML file of ESB. So we'll have to navigate to repository conf access to directory. Then open access to XML file. So I'll go to the ESP tab then. Let's search for the particular entry. So you can see it says uncomment this and configure as appropriate for JMS transport with WSO2 MB. So I'm going to enable this transport receiver. This has been successfully enabled now. So the next requirement is going to be enabling a transport sender to configure using connection pool for sending messages. So I'm going to enable JMS transport sender. Okay, we have completed this step as well. So you can see a uh, message broker has been started without any errors. So since we changed the port offset value, it has been started now on 944 HTTPS port. And the next uh, step would be editing JNDF properties file, which is located inside DSB's repository conf directory, uh, which uh, registered requires queues and uh, required uh, topics for a particular scenario. So we have, uh, I have already mentioned this uh, in this documentation. So we can copy these values to change these properties file inside ESP's repository conf directory. So again, I will uh, go to conf directory. So you can see uh, change the properties file here. So I'm going to open it. Right. So to register some connection factories, you need to uh, define these values. So I'm going to copy these values directly from my documentation. I replace this value now. And the next thing is going to be registering queues and topics. So for this purpose, we are using a topic. We are using a queue called JMS MS uh, underscore MB. This is our queue value, so I'm going to copy it as well. And I'm going to paste it here. For topic, I'm using my topic. So I'm going to replace the existing value with that. So this, this has been saved now. So we have completed this step as well. The next step would be uh, starting the backend service. So as I told you earlier, we are going to build simple stock card service uh, inside DSP samples directory, access to server. So you can see the DSP distribution here. I'm going to samples, going to access to server, go to the source and simple stock code service. So you can see a build XML file here. So I'm going to build it now. Okay. Now the service, simple stock code service should be successfully deployed uh, into access to server. So I'm going to start the access to server, which is going to be our backend service, I'm going to host our backend service. So I'm going to 
use uh, access to server.sh file now you can see the access to server has been started on port 9000 to ensure that we can go to uh, localhost 9000 and then services you can see on access to server simple stock code service being successfully deployed right there we have completed this step as well